Okay, today we are going to talk about facial nerve core concepts, right? Facial nerve core concepts, right? Now, you must be knowing that facial nerve is a master of facial expressions, right? It regulates, controls the muscles of facial expression, everyone knows. And it is so much master on facial expression and emotions that if you are very sad, facial nerve helps you to bring tears. And when you are angry, it helps you to produce a lot of saliva, you can throw it on others. Yeah, right? So let's start how it really works, right? First we will see that what kind of fibers are present in facial nerve. What type of fibers are present in facial nerve? It means we have to go back in the central nervous system. That in the central nervous system, right? Facial nerve is taking what kind of fibers and it is connected to what type of different nuclei, right? So let's draw brain stem. Uh, here is your, suppose, midbrain, and here is pons, and here is medulla, right? And your beloved spinal cord cerebellum. Now, number one, facial nerve have fibers, motor fibers. First I will talk about the motor fibers and then I will talk about sensory fibers. Facial nerve have motor fibers which mainly control the muscle, the facial expression, right? They are called brachiomotor fibers. You must be knowing that muscle of fish, muscle of the facial expression are derived from the second brachial arch, right? And those fibers of facial nerve, which are connected with the muscles of facial expression, they are called brachiomotor fibers, right? Now, these fibers have their cell bodies in the lower part of the pons, right? In the lower part of the pons, there are a group of cell bodies here, which make a nucleus. We call it facial nerve proper nucleus. Right? The group of cell bodies here in the lower part of pons, or rostral pons, right? And this group of cell bodies make a small nucleus, and this nucleus is called principal nucleus of facial nerve or facial nerve proper nucleus or brachiomotor nucleus of the facial nerve, right? And usually, motor fibers, usually, motor fibers from central nervous system, they exit forward. But there is something funny about these fibers. You know what happened? Rather than they directly move forward and outward, first they go backward. Anyone can tell me why they are going backward? Actually, they heard something that there is a tent here on the back. You know what is this tent? Can you tell me what is this tent? Fourth ventricle. And I think these fibers heard somewhere that there's some sex going on here. So they start moving backward. But by the time they reach here, they were very sad. You know why they were very sad? They came to know that was not sex. That was six. Six now nucleus is here. They misheard it. So when they miss realize their mistake, they just move around this, what is this nerve nucleus? And go to their normal root. Have you seen men? The naughty men? When they are supposed to go forward straight? Sometimes they hear there's something good there and they go back. But rather than sex, they found the six. And when they found the six, they just turn back and go to the real destination. Is that right? Now, these facial nerve fibers, when they move backward and loop around the sixth nerve nucleus, they produce a little elevation, yes, a little elevation in the floor of fourth ventricle. This is called facial colliculus. What is it called? Colliculus. Facial colliculus. And then they turn forward and downward and they exit here. What is this place where they, they are exiting? Right. It is ponto medullary junction. But on the side, there is cerebellum. 
because cerebellum is on this side, you are getting it. So we also call it pontocerebral junction. You are understanding? So that is the point, pontocerebral junction, where facial nerve is exiting outward. Let's see a frontal view, right? Let me draw midbrain from the front and brain stem. This is the brain stem from the front, right? Pons, medulla. And what is on the side? Yes? Cerebellum, thank you for knowing. And six nerve come out here, right? Seventh nerve is exiting at this point. Seventh and seventh, right? And of course, just lateral to the seventh, which nerve is coming out? Eighth. Vestibulo, cochlea. You're getting it. At ponto medullary junction, as you move from medial to lateral, the nerves which are coming out there, or they are attached at this junction, that is sixth, seventh, and eighth. Abducent, facial, and vestibulo, cochlear. Is that right? But especially because seventh and eighth are much laterally placed, so we can also say that they are exiting at ponto cerebral junction. Right? So these facial nerve fiber, which are going to be connected eventually with the mainly with the muscle, the facial expression, right? They are coming out from here and they make the facial nerve proper. This is one group of fiber. Then there's another type of motor fibers which come out of the brain stem and become part of the facial nerve, right? This everyone knows, the facial nerve has fibers for the muscle, the facial expression. But facial nerve has more fibers, right? Now, second group of motor fibers which are coming for the facial nerve, right? Those motor fibers are basically parasympathetic fibers. And those parasympathetic fibers help you to lacrimate and salivate. Is that right? Now, those parasympathetic fibers which are part of the facial nerve and eventually they supply the lacrimal gland and which salivary gland? Submandibular and sublingual salivary gland. Is that right? They are connected to which nucleus in the brain stem? Anyone? What? My question is, listen, my question is, facial nerve has parasympathetic fibers, right? Facial nerve has parasympathetic fiber. My question is, in the central nervous system, in the brain stem, these fibers are coming from which parasympathetic nucleus? Yes, anyone? What happened? You don't want to tell me anything? Okay, you like to hide your knowledge. Yes, you are reading the book. Can you tell me? Still you couldn't find it. Okay, let me tell you. There's a nucleus here. Look, this is also lower part of the pons, you can say. Right? This nucleus is parasympathetic nucleus. Right? Here it has... Yeah. Oh, this is weeping nucleus and drooling nucleus. This nucleus is called superior salivatory nucleus. What is it called? Superior salivatory nucleus. But actually it should be called lacrimatory salivatory nucleus. Right? But I don't know why. So in some books they write just lacrimatory nucleus and in some books they write just superior salivatory nucleus. But you must remember this nucleus has the neurons, cell bodies of the neurons, which are sending the fibers, right, which actually, eventually are going to influence the lacrimation and salivation by which glands? Sublingual and submandibular, right? So this is superior salivatory nucleus and rostral part of pons, in the lower part of pons you can say, and this is having cell bodies of preganglionic parasympathetic fibers, preganglionic parasympathetic fibers, and these fibers, they come out of these, what is this? This parasympathetic fiber come out, right, and they also go with the facial nerve superior salivatory nucleus, right? 
remember inferior salivatory nucleus is just below it and inferior salivatory nucleus gives us fiber to which nerve ninth nerve glossopharyngeal right but superior salivatory nucleus give fiber to seventh nerve and superior salivatory is not only salivatory but it is also lacrimatory is that right now these are the two motor type of fibers which are component of facial nerve now we come to the sensory fibers with the facial nerve right what kind of sensory fibers are present in facial nerve? Yes, my friend. It, it, um, it gets the sensation of the, um, uh, the tip of the, the tongue. Oh my God. He uh, really is a sexy boy. He's saying that facial nerve has some sensation from the tip of the tongue. Uh, what kind of sensation? Uh, like the, it's really not from the tip of the tongue. Uh, it is the anterior two-third of the tongue, right? Sorry. I know you, at your age you are very bothered about the tip. But I understand your preoccupation, uh, but facial nerve is little more practical, right? Uh, you know, here is your tongue. What is the color of your tongue? Black or red? Okay, some people do have black tongue, I think. Anyway, so this is a tongue, anterior two third and posterior one third. Is that right? Facial nerve have sensation, collect the sensation from anterior two third of the tongue. Which sensations? Taste sensation. Don't try to be sour, sweet. Just say taste sensation, right? Facial nerve, through lingual nerve, which we'll go into detail, but the taste sensation from interior two-third of the tongue is the taste sensation from interior two-third of the tongue. Remember, touch, pain, and temperature sensation from interior two-third of the tongue are part of the trigeminal system through the lingual nerve, right? But interior two-third of the tongue, taste sensations, right, they pass through the facial nerve, right? And posterior one-third of the tongue, taste sensation go by which nerve? Glossopharyngeal. And this is facial. And posterior most, and from the, you can say, well, area around the epiglottis, taste sensations go by tenth nerve. Is that right? So my friend, these sensations are not only at the tip. Fine? So anterior two-third of the tongue has taste sensations which uh, are taken by facial nerve. So we can say, I will teach you later how these fibers really reach there. Right? But just right now we say these are fibers for the taste. Okay? What are these fibers? Taste fiber. Right? Gestatory fiber, sensory fibers right they are connected of course they are bringing the taste sensation from the periphery to the center right uh, in the central of a system these fibers are connected where which nucleus in the central of a system is related with that taste what happened someone put your mute button any nucleus in central of a system where all the taste sensation come you heard of that nucleus right I'm going to make that nucleus here. Right, it is dancing a lot because it can taste, taste sensation come here. What is this nucleus? Nucleus of tractus solitarius. Nucleus of tractus solitarius has many connections. Some of the very important connections are for the taste, right? And, of course, because seventh nerve, facial nerve, collect that taste sensation from anterior two-third of the tongue. Is that right? So, seventh nerve should be connected with which nucleus? Nucleus of? Tractus? Solitarius, right? So, these are seventh nerve fiber, which will be connected with the? Yes? Oh, thank you for knowing it. Right? So this is connected with tractus solitarius. Let me tell you a little thing about tractus solitarius. Tractus solitarius is, you know, nucleus for the taste. It means all the nerves which bring the taste fibers, they should have connection with which nucleus? Tractus solitarius. All the nerves which bring the taste fiber from the tongue, right? Right? 
all the nerves which bring the taste fiber from the tongue eventually should be connected to which nucleus? Right. It's all logical. So gastratory fiber, or taste fiber of seventh, gastratory fiber from posterior one third of the tongue, and gastratory fiber from the tenth nucleus, all of them centrally end up on, on nucleus of tractus solitarius. Is that right? So anyway, I have shown here, this is the connection of which nerve? Seventh nerve. Tractus solitarius nucleus takes some other sensations also. I will not right now talk about that. So this is how many? Two motor fibers, part of facial nerve, and one sensory fiber. There is one more sensation which are part of the facial nerve. Who will tell me? One more sensation. Anyone? Facial nerve has touch, pain, and temperature fibers which are called general somatic afferents, just to put a little academic situation. Uh, touch, pain, and temperature fibers are also in facial nerve, few fiber which are coming from the ear, right? Posterior part of what is this? External artery meatus and external ear, right? So those are which fiber? Touch, pain, and temperature. What are these fibers? Touch, pain, and temperature. They are also part of facial nerve. And these touch, pain, and temperature fibers, when they go into central nervous system, of course, they cannot be connected to motor nuclei. And they, they are not connected with the nucleus for the taste. They are connected with the major nuclear system in the brain stem which is connected with all those nerves which are concerned with touch, pain and temperature on face. Which is a major nuclear system for touch, pain and temperature? Trigeminal system. Have you heard of trigeminal system? Right? Trigeminal system. So you can say here is mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal and here is pontine nucleus of trigeminal. Have, have you heard of it? And then there is another trigeminal nucleus. What is this? Oh my God, this is not, a, he is saying corticospinal, it is not extending from cortex to spinal cord. Oh my God, you are adding to my knowledge. It is called only spinal nucleus of trigeminal, right? Actually, listen, mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal, pontine nucleus of trigeminal, and spinal nucleus of trigeminal, all three nuclei connect, collect the touch pain temperature from face, right? Because, most of the touch pain temperature sensation go through the trigeminal nerve and trigeminal nerve is heavily connected with these nuclei so this nuclear system is called trigeminal nuclei but now we know that even some little touch pain temperature sensation or somatic sensation some of the somatic sensation may go through seventh nerve ninth nerve tenth nerve but because they are touch pain temperature sensation, they have to go to the nuclear system which is related with touch pain and temperature. And what is the nuclear system for touch pain and temperature? Trigeminal nuclear system. So if I say seventh nerve has fibers for touch pain and temperature or somatic afferents from the external ear, when they enter into central nervous system, they should be eventually connected to? Yes. What is this? Mesencephalic? Nucleus, sorry, uh, spinal nucleus of trigeminal. So these are the four main fibers in facial nerve, right? So first of all, what we have learned up to now, the facial nerve has importantly, clinically, there are four types of fibers which are present in facial nerve. Number one, branchiomotor fiber, which are going for muscle, the facial expression mainly, right? Then there are parasympathetic fibers, which are mainly concerned with lacrimation and salivation. Then there are taste fibers with anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And then there are touch pain temperature or somatic afferent which are with external ear, right? But as you should know, these fibers are connected in periphery where you should also know how they are connected in centrally, right? So branchiomotor fibers in the periphery they are connected with muscle, the facial expression and centrally they are connected with principal nucleus of facial nerve branchiomotor nucleus. Parasympathetic fibers, peripherally they are connected with the lacrimal gland and also with the submandibular and sublingual 
gland eventually they are controlling their secretion centrally superior salivatory nucleus taste fiber in the seventh nerve peripherally they are connected with the anterior two third of the tongue for the taste centrally they are connected with rectus solitarius touch point temperature somatic afferent of the facial nerve peripherally they are innervating external layer centrally they are connected with the trigeminal nuclear system spinal component am i clear now once all these fiber exit these fibers make two bundles they are arranged into two bundle all these three fibers they are part of one bundle they are part of one bundle right they become component of they make a one tight bundle right in this way facial nerve is divided into two part one part has mainly branchiomotor fibers and other part has parasympathetic fibers as well as taste fiber as well as somatic afferents right this component of the facial nerve is called nervous intermedius what is this component called nervous intermedius now this nervous intermedius in most of the book as it is written it is the sensory component of facial nerve and this is called facial nerve proper which is also called motor component right this branchiomotor fibers right they make a thick bundle and this is called facial nerve proper this is facial nerve proper right and this is nervous intermediate even though usually we say conventionally the nervous intermediate is sensory component of course it's having a uh, taste sensation and also touch point temperature sensation but we should not forget that even though we call it sensory but it also has parasympathetic motor fiber is that right clear now we know these are the fibers which are component of facial nerve now next work is that we have to see how these fibers reach to their final destination because right now these fibers when they exit out of the brain stem at pontocerebellar junction they are inside the cranial cavity right we have to see from this point on right how they reach to the final destination for that purpose i i will draw first some landmark of head and neck some landmark features of head and neck then we'll see how facial nerve and branches move about inside that system right so let's make it some landmark of head and neck okay so let's suppose it is anterior cranial fossa right of course this must be orbit this is anterior cranial fossa here it is middle cranial fossa and here it is yes this is posterior cranial fossa is that right here it is what anterior cranial fossa and of course there's no fun in telling that under the orbit under the orbit what is this maxilla if you forget you can touch on your own face and know it under the orbit there is maxilla right so i will just draw some important structure so we can see and under the maxilla of course if you open your mouth you will see your tongue i think someone else will see your tongue right here is your tongue <sighs> yes so anterior cranial fossa middle cranial fossa posterior cranial fossa here it is brain stem right and this is orbit of course there is there's no fun in telling there's something like this here you know and yes anyone tell me what is this area if you move on the orbit backward under the orbit and on the back of the maxilla upward what is this area called i'm about to be impressed by someone what is this area called you have heard it so many times you move on the orbit backward and maxilla backward and upward and deep inside right there is a fossa here all of you know that fossa you have heard of it but you don't want to tell me i know you are nasty guys 
Tirigo Palatine Fossa, why don't you tell me? Have you heard of Tirigo Palatine Fossa? My friend, if you don't know where it is, how wow? Oh, very sad. What is this? At least now you tell me, what is this? Tirigo Palatine Fossa. Right, anyway, this says something very important related with the facial nerve. So we will talk about that, right? Then, there is another very important landmark related with the facial nerve here and that is, what is this? This is middle ear. I want to show you relationship of facial nerve with the middle ear. Now, let me make the middle ear exactly more clearly. I'm going to draw the middle ear here and related with the external ear also. Let's suppose this is external, uh, you know middle ear is something like a cube. This is middle ear cavity. I'm drawing the structure on the right side. And if you move on this side, of course, then what is it? Ear and this is maybe of a lady. This external ear. From external ear, if you move external auditory meatus, is that right? From external auditory meatus, what is this wall? Yes, very good, tympanic membrane. You get it, this is the lateral wall of middle ear. <coughs> this is lateral wall, and what is this wall? Interior wall, what is this? Roof of middle ear, this is the roof of middle ear. This is interior wall of middle ear, directed forward. This is the roof, and this is lateral wall of middle ear. Am I right? You are clear about this, this is the right ear, okay? Now, it's very important to understand the very intimate relationship of facial nerve with the ear. Right? Because many clinical problems occur when facial nerve is in intimate relationship with the ear passing through that area. So let me show where the facial nerve is related. Actually, if I remove the lateral wall, let's suppose I remove the lateral wall, what is left there? This is medial wall, this is the posterior wall, this is the floor, this is floor, this is medial wall, this is posterior wall. And there was lateral wall here which I have removed. Okay, this is interior wall. Now listen, this is interior wall of, what is this? Middle ear cavity, this is, what is this? Posterior, this is floor, and what is this? Medial wall of? Middle ear. Medial wall of? Yeah. Am I clear? Everyone is clear about this diagram? So I'm bringing this diagram here. Right? To show you the relationship of facial nerve Okay, now again I will repeat, this is the middle ear, here was tympanic cavity, I have removed the tympanic cavity, what I have done, I have removed the tympanic cavity, I have removed the roof, now you can look at the middle ear cavity, this is the, what is this, this is the interior wall of middle ear, I don't need to make something here, to show this is the posterior end of posterior wall, right and this is the floor and that is which wall what is this wall on the medial side it's clear to everyone now facial nerve has very very special relationship with the medial wall and the posterior wall how let me tell you actually facial nerve when it is entering into this area right from here it enters into Yes, it enter into internal auditory meatus, right? What is this? External auditory meatus, right? In the same way there is internal auditory meatus 
which connect the posterior cranial fossa and bring it connection up to where? Medial wall of the middle ear. So what is this? Internal acoustic meatus. Facial nerve will enter into that. Right? When facial nerve will enter into that, now I will make this area more clear that this is the medial wall, posterior, yes wall, floor, and what is this? This is interior. This is interior wall, right? Okay. Now, actually, if this is the, from here, there is a hole from where the facial nerve will enter in the pitreous part of temporal bone, right? And this is having, this is ending up at this point. Now, this canal, this canal, which is within the bone of the skull, this is called internal auditory meatus or internal auditory canal. Facial nerve enter into this. And if it keep on moving inside, eventually it will reach where? On which wall of the? Medial, medial wall of middle ear. Medial wall in upper corner or lower corner? Upper corner. Interior corner, posterior corner. So now you know that actually facial nerve through the auditory canal reaches to an entro superior corner of what? Medial wall of middle ear. Any question here? Now, up to this, all fibers of facial nerve come together. Hunto. All of these fibers come together here. Is that right? They are very loyal, you know, at least for a while. Now, but there is a special friend with them because this canal is used by two nerves. Number one, facial nerve. Of course, facial nerve has two components, facial nerve proper and nervous intermediates. Facial nerve goes through internal auditory meters. What is the other nerve which also goes with the facial nerve? Vestibulocochlear nerve, eighth nerve, right? So basically, seventh nerve is entering here and with that, in this canal, what other nerve is entering? Vestibulocochlear. Why I'm telling you this, that if there is lien in this area, in internal auditory meters, it will damage the seventh nerve as well as damage the eighth nerve, vestibulocochlear component. Anyway, now I will show you fibers one by one. Right now, how, what is the plan of the lecture? We'll understand one by one. First of all, I will talk about how fibers, what are these fibers? Visceromotor, visceromotor fiber, bring, sorry, brachiomotor fiber reach their destination. Then I will talk about how parasympathetic fiber reach their destination. Then I will talk about how the taste fiber are connected with the periphery. And in the last I will discuss how the general somatic afferent are connected with the periphery. First of all, we talk about these fibers. Facial nerve proper fiber. They enter into where they have entered? Now you will tell me. What is this? Internal artery? Meatus. Meatus. Very good. And the fiber reach there. Right? Now, here there is a ganglion. There is a ganglion. Right? And from this ganglion, facial nerve take a very sharp turn backward. Right? This fiber reach up to this ganglion. But remember, these fibers don't don't relay in the ganglion. These are brachiomotor fibers. They just pass by the ganglion or within the ganglion, but they don't stop there. These fibers pass through the ganglion and then they move. What is this? Now they are moving forward or backward? Backward. backward. Very good. They are moving backward. Now these fibers are going backward, but where? They are going through a bony canal. There is a long canal here. And this canal is bony canal, right? So you can say facial nerve proper fiber, which are coming from this proper facial nerve nucleus, 
up to now they have two bend two important bend one bend is they move backward and then around the sixth nerve nucleus suddenly move forward right then they enter into internally caustic meatus internal auditory canal they reach up to that geniculate ganglion i will tell you later what fiber the what cell body the present in geniculate ganglion but from here facial nerve fiber right have another beautiful band right and this band now they move backward you know like beautiful woman facial nerve proper or facial nerve has two bands one band is here and other band is there right now because band is also called genu so that is why this uh, what is this ganglion is called geniculate ganglion it's a genu genu in turn anyway the facial nerve proper fibers they are going backward into this bony canal and this bony bony canal is running horizontally within the medial wall of middle ear i mean this was the medial wall of middle ear right and this is the canal here this is a bony canal you are getting it this there is a long tube in the bone and this goes first backward and then from here it turns yes where this canal turns downward now my friend look at it it's downward nothing can go back forever somewhere it has to go down also now what i'm saying listen it came from internal auditory meatus internal auditory canal then facial canal right facial canal which facial canal is the canal in the bony system of the medial wall right now these fibers are going backward but when it reaches to the posterior wall of middle ear from here this canal turn where downward this canal turns yes downward right and it moves down 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 and now you have seen there is a canal in the bone right in the medial upper medial upper part of medial wall of the middle ear and then it is moving downward through which wall posterior, posterior wall and then this bony canal open at a foramen this foramen is on one side there is mastoid process you know mastoid process this is mastoid process right other side there is styloid process right so this foramen where the canal open between the styloid process and mastoid process this is called which foramen stylomastoid foramen what is it called stylomastoid foramen right so it will reach here this is the mastoid process and deep to that there is styloid process and it will come over here now these fibers okay i will make a little window here so you can see how these fibers are moving so these fibers facial nerve proper fiber brachiomotor fiber are efferent fibers for muscle the facial expression from the geniculate ganglion they enter into facial canal they move backward right within the middle ear medial wall and then they turn downward again continuing within the bony canal now this bony canal is a part of yes posterior wall from there they go downward downward and downward downward and eventually these fibers exit facial nerve proper fibers exit at what is this point stylomastoid foramen am i clear now on the way these fibers brachiomotor fibers right they give a branch which is very important branch here they give a small branch here which comes out here small branch right and which will control a special bone here maybe you know if your ear anatomy is good that there is a bone here this bone is called stapes what is this bone called stapes is that right right and this bone is controlled by a muscle and that muscle is called stapedius what is this muscle called very good stapedius muscle some one of you know about it that's great 
So now where is exactly this trapezius muscle? You remember what is this wall? Please, what is this wall? Anterior or posterior? Say it loudly my friend, everyone has a big tongue. So what is this? Posterior. posterior. In the posterior wall, there is a muscle which is coming forward like this. And what is the name of this muscle? Stapedius. Stapedius. And stapedius muscle come out of posterior wall and catch a bone. What is that bone? Stapes. And the stapedius muscle control the stapedius Stapedius muscle control the stapes bone and does not allow it to excessively vibrate when we hear the sound. For example, if you talk to me very loudly, tympanic membrane will vibrate. And if there is excessive vibration, tympanic membrane will vibrate malleus incus stapes, which will produce vibration in inner ear. But if you talk very loudly, there is a chance stapedius stapes move too much control the excessive movement of stapes, there is a muscle called? What is this? Stapedius. Stapedius. And this muscle is given a branch from facial nerve proper. So this is what is this muscle? Stapedius. What is this bone? Stapes. And what is this branch coming? This is the first branch of brachiomotor. What is this branch? This branch is for stapes. Clear? And this branch, if it is damaged, then stapes move less or more? Yeah. More. And if this branch is not functioning, stapes, stapedius muscle become weak. paralyzed, paralyzed or weak. And stapes, with, when someone talk, when there's a loud sound, stapes move too much. And that become annoying. Right? So anyway, so this is one branch. After that, this has gone down and come out at which point? Stylo? Mastered foramen. When it comes at, out at the stylo mastered foramen, from this foramen, it gives different branches. First of all, it gives a branch which goes backward. Right? And this goes backward and upward. And this is on the, this branch comes from here and goes up backward and upward. So what is it called? Posterior auricular branch. Because it is on the, going on the back of the ear. What is this branch called? Posterior auricular. And this posterior auricular branch, right, it will uh, give some muscles control here, but these are not very strong muscles, you know, some auricularis muscles or fronto-occipitalis muscle, occipital part, right, but it's not very important, right. Plus, later on I will tell you, with this motor branch, some sensory fiber also come. That I will discuss later. But anyway, the first branch which came out from here was? Stapedius, branch for stapedius, second is posterior auricular and then another branch which come out and give to two muscles, muscle stylohyde and posterior belly of digastric, right? After that, this facial nerve proper jump into, jump into parotid gland. It moves forward, there is a parotid gland here, is that right? These days it is still here, right? So facial nerve, what it has done? When it was going down, it gave a branch to the stapedius, then it went further down, it came out of stylomastite, foramen, it gave posterior auricular branch, right? And then it gave motor branches to stylohyde muscle and posterior belly of digastric, and then it jumped into parotid gland. And when it jumped into parotid gland, I will make a, this is a parotid gland, here, when facial nerve jump into parotid gland, within the substance of parotid gland, this, these fibers of facial nerve proper, they divide into five branches, five terminal branches, right? And these five terminal branches, they will come out of this. Let me make a little face here. Okay, now these fibers are going to the muscle of the facial expression, right? So some fiber will go upward, look, fiber comes from here and goes upward. What is this area? Temple. So the, what is this branch called? Temporal. Then some move forward and little upward. What is this bone? 
zygomatic. What is this branch? Zygomatic, right? And some fibers move like this, and they are going to supply the muscles around the mouth. What is this area? Buckle. So what is this branch called? Buckle. And then and some fibers come down, and they're moving with the mandible. What is this branch called? Marginal mandibular, because this is at the margin of mandible. And some really go down and supply some muscles uh, in the neck like platysma. So what is that called? Cervical. Is that right? So how many branches? Look here. From parotid gland, terminal branches of facial nerve are coming out. What is this branch going? Temporal. Say loudly. Temporal. Temporal. What is this? Zygomatic. Zygomatic. What is this? Buccal. Don't say mouth branch. Buccal. And what is this? Marginal. Mandibular. And what is this? Cervical. So there's no need to remember this. You just remember the, what is this? Temple, zygomatic, buccal, mandible. You can never say mandible is here, I hope. Right? Mandibular and of course cervical is here. Right? Next. So just we put it here. What is this branch going upward? Templar. And what is this? Zygomatic. What is this? Buccal. Not buccal, buccal. And what is this? Marginal, mandibular. And what is this? Cervical. These are the terminal branches of facial nerve which are going to supply the muscle the facial expression. Am I clear? Any question up to this? So now you know that what is this? Facial nerve proper, branchiomotor fiber, from where they originate and how they eventually pass through the skull and where they terminate. Any question up to this? Any question? No. Now we come to <coughs> parasympathetic fibers. They are really very naughty fibers, you know. They are going to control for the lacrimation and salivation. Now the question is that if these parasympathetic fibers are going to control for lacrimation, they have to go to lacrimal gland. Lacrimal gland is here. And if these parasympathetic fibers are also supposed to control salivation by submandibular gland and sublingual gland, they have to come here. Now, we will see how these parasympathetic fibers eventually pass through different areas of head and neck and eventually end up in controlling lacrimation and salivation. Right? Now, let's suppose I talk about that two fibers are starting from here. You can say mainly lacrimatory pathway fibers and what is the other? Salivatory. Salivatory. Right? So here I'm showing it as one group. So what they have entered into which area now? Please, can you tell me? What is this? Internal auditory? Yes. Meatus. From here, these fiber are going through that and reach up to which ganglion? Geniculate, geniculate ganglion. And these parasympathetic fibers, what they do in the geniculate ganglion? Do the synapse there or not? These parasympathetic fibers, do they synapse in geniculate ganglion or not? Who said yes? He should know that he's wrong. Yeah. The reason being, at least you should know as good student that head and neck has basically only four parasympathetic ganglion. Ciliary ganglion, ciliary ganglion, pterygopalatine ganglion, aortic ganglion, and some mandibular ganglion. Head and neck has four parasympathetic uh, ganglion, ciliary ganglion, pterygopalatine ganglion, Submandibular ganglion, aortic ganglion, and geniculate is none of these. Geniculate ganglion is not, it is not a parasympathetic ganglion. Later I will tell you which fibers are there really, which cell bodies are there, but not for para parasympathetic fibers. Don't synapse here, they don't do any activity here. Like these fibers, they just flirt here and pass by. Right? These parasympathetic fibers, but there's one thing. There were two types of parasympathetic fiber coming up to this point. What were those two fibers? Lacrimatory and salivatory. After reaching up to the level of geniculate ganglion, they separate. Lacrimatory fibers go to different root and what is this? Salivatory fibers go to different root. These salivatory fibers go along with the facial nerve proper. Where they go, I will talk later. Right? What are these fibers coming? Lacrimatory or salivatory? 
salivatory, right? I will talk later on how they reach to the submandibular ganglion. But first we talk about these fibers. What are these? Which are going to the lacrimal gland. Am I right? These are parasympathetic preganglionic fibers which are centrally connected with superior salivatory nucleus and along with the facial nerve as a part of nervous intermediates they have reached up to the geniculate ganglion from here these parasympathetic fibers separate and these fibers go to the what is this what is this middle cranial fossa these fibers go to the middle cranial fossa and when they are moving there they find there is some hole here they find a foramen here and I don't know like many people they love to jump into some hole so these fibers will jump into this hole right these are parasympathetic fibers from geniculate ganglion they are eventually going to be lacrimal gland connection so they jump from geniculate ganglion and they go to the middle cranial fossa from there they jump into which foramen Foramen ovale, no my friend. Foramen ovale is for mandibular nerve. Don't try to give me a little twist. This is like a lacerated foramen. Foramen lacerum. Okay, I know you don't know these lacerated things anyway. So this nerve jump into foramen lacerum. In the front of the foramen lacerum, right, it finds a hole. In the front of the wall of the foramen lacerum it find a hole right and these fiber love to enter into another hole right but there is one thing one front friend will join them you must be knowing there is something called internal carotid artery and around the internal carotid artery there is a plexus of sympathetic fibers you know that some of the sympathetic fibers from here also come and join these parasympathetic fibers are you understanding what has happened that parasympathetic fibers are coming from geniculate ganglion right from there they jump into middle cranial fossa they jump into foramen lacerum and enter into this special canal but before entering they are joined by these parasympathetic fibers are joined by sympathetic fiber which are coming from plexus around internal carotid is that right then these two fiber together move through this canal they move through this canal and come into which foramen which area my friend I told you in the beginning of the lecture pterygo palatine fossa and in this pterygo palatine fossa there is a ganglion here right and this ganglion is which ganglion yeah what is this ganglion? Pterygopalatine? Ganglion. So these fibers, these parasympathetic fibers, end up into this ganglion. And from here, post ganglionic fiber will start. And sympathetic fibers, sympathetic fibers just pass through this ganglion. Right? Now let me tell you what are these nerves. Now please be attentive for a while. What are these important connections? Parasympathetic fibers, lacrimatory fiber from superior salivatory nucleus or lacrimatory nucleus from lower part of the pons as a part of nervous intermediates, which is a part of facial nerve, they enter into internal auditory meatus and eventually reach up to geniculate ganglion. They are lacrimatory fibers depart separate from the salivatory fibers. Lacrimatory fiber move from geniculate ganglion making a very special nerve which bothers the medical students a lot because they, all of you have heard of this nerve but I know you will not tell me the name of this nerve from this nerve they will jump and reach up to here but someone may tell me what is this nerve called this branch of facial nerve from geniculate ganglion having parasympathetic fiber mainly few sensory fiber and going to middle cranial fossa jumping into foramen lacerum what is this nerve you have heard of it. It is called greater petrosal nerve. Have you heard of greater petrosal nerve? 
oh my god, you have not heard so many things. So this is greater petrosal nerve. Is that right? And from sympathetic plexus around the internal carotid artery, sympathetic fiber jump and they also become fused with the greater petrosal nerve. Now, these sympathetic fibers, these sympathetic fibers which are jumping from the internal carotid artery towards the greater petrosal nerve, this branch, what is this called? Yes, yes, you are right. Deep petrosal nerve. What is it? Deep petrosal nerve. <laughs> so greater petrosal nerve and deep petrosal nerve, they come together and they move through this canal. This canal, which is moving from the anterior wall of foramen lacerum up to which? Fossa? Pterygopalatine fossa. This bony canal, this bony canal, this bony canal is called pterygoid canal. What is it called? Pterygoid canal. And this nerve, which is now made by the greater petrosal nerve and deep petrosal nerve, and both of them together move and reach connected to the ganglion. This combined nerve is called nerve to pterygoid canal. What is it called? Nerve to pterygoid canal. The another name for this nerve from here up to here. This another name for this nerve is Vidian nerve. <coughs> what is this? Vidian nerve. Vidian nerve or nerve to pterygoid canal. So in this way Sympathetic fibers from the facial nerve, right, they have reached to pterygopalatine ganglion. Now, you know that your friend, what is this here? Lacrimal gland, you know? Lacrimal gland is here. So, preganglionic fiber end here, from here this postganglionic fibers have to somehow reach to, what is this? Lacrimal, Lacrimal gland. And how they reach there? Right. Before I really move forward, I want to tell you Now, this was anterior cranial fossa, what is this? Middle cranial fossa, right? From middle cranial fossa Let's come in another area, there is a very big ganglion here What is this ganglion called? Trigeminal ganglion. You, you have heard of trigeminal ganglion? Which has uh, one ophthalmic division, other maxillary division, and another mandibular division. You must be knowing ophthalmic division, fibers enter through superior orbital fissure and they divide into nasociliary branch and they also divide into frontal branch, they also divide into. Okay. What is this nerve? of thalmic division, of thalmic division divided into three branches one is nasociliary, nasociliary, other is frontal and another is lacrimal and this lacrimal branch comes here right? to the lacrimal gland okay I remove this you know that it's there now if these parasympathetic fiber have to reach to the lacrimal gland somehow they should reach to Lacrimal communicate to the lacrimal nerve. How they do? Actually, here is another foramen. It is very much a round foramen. What do we call it? Foramen? Rotundum. And from here, what is coming down? Yes, and forward. What is this? This was ophthalmic division. What is this? Maxillary division. What is this? Mandibular, right? Now, this maxillary nerve, it is passing from here and you know now actually these parasympathetic fibers from pterygopalatine ganglion jump to maxillary nerve right? maxillary nerve give here through the inferior orbital fissure maxillary nerve give a branch which is called zygomatic branch right? of maxillary nerve these knotty fibers they jump from the ganglion to the maxillary nerve and then move with which branch? Zygomatic branch. Is that right? This is zygomatic branch of maxillary nerve. From here, they make a communication to what? Lacrimal. lacrimal nerve. And with that, they reach to where? Lacrimal gland. 
So this is lacrimatory pathway of parasympathetic fibers. Let me recap, right? Start from the beginning. When a girl is weeping, right? What is the connection started? I'm talking about in central nervous system. Yes. Or a baby is weeping, right? Which nucleus is firing? Superior salivatory nucleus, which is also called lacrimatory nucleus. We rapid now you will tell me what are the fibers? Superior salivatory nucleus, these are sympathetic, parasympathetic fibers. Parasympathetic, these are pre-ganglionic, post-ganglionic. Pre-ganglionic, because ganglion is there. These pre-ganglionic fibers are part of facial nerve proper or nervous intermediate? Nervous intermediate. They are passing through which canal now? Internal? Auditory meters. They reach to which ganglion? Geniculate ganglion. They don't synapse there. They are lacrimatory fibers separate from salivatory fibers. These lacrimatory fibers from the geniculate ganglion, this fiber exit and move towards the middle canal fossa as greater, greater, yes. Say it loudly, I don't hear. Which nerve? Greater petrosal nerve. Greater petrosal nerve jump into foramen lacerum. There it receive which nerve? Deep petrosal nerve. Together they make which nerve? Nerve to tirigate? Canal. And that reaches to tirigopalatine? Ganglion. From there, preganglionic fiber end. Postganglionic fibers from here, mainly they jump to the maxillary nerve, the zygomatic branch, and then communication of zygomatic branch to lacrimal branch, and with that, this fiber reaches to lacrimal gland. This is the minimum you should know about this pathway, lacrimatory. But of course, all these parasympathetic fibers which are coming through the up to this point, of course, many of them are going to lacrimal gland, but some of them go to nose also, so nasal gland. Some of them come down in palatine glands. Some of them fibers from here go to paranasal sinuses like sphenoid sinus or frontal sinus or maxillary sinus, right? So a good doctor will remember that from pterygopalatine ganglion, postganglionic parasympathetic fiber go for lacrimation. But excellent doctor will remember this parasympathetic fiber not only go to the, not only go to the, lacrimal gland, but from here through other branches of pterygopalatine ganglion, they go, they, are, uh, they go to the nasal glands, they go to paranasal sinuses glands, they also go to the palatine and palatine glands. Am I clear? Any question? No, thank God. So these parasympathetic fibers are done with, lacrimatory pathway. Next, let's deal with the, what are these fibers? Salivatory pathway, right? Now, if we talk about the salivatory pathway, these parasympathetic fibers are coming with the facial nerve proper, they are moving through the facial canal backward, then these fibers go downward. They are moving with this. But when you look here, they don't come out from here, where they have gone. Listen carefully. These parasympathetic fibers, which are going for salivation and stimulate what? Sublingual and some mandibular gland. From the geniculate ganglion, these salivatory fibers, you, you get it? They move with the facial nerve proper into facial canal. First they move in the horizontal component of facial canal, they move backward and then in the posterior wall of the middle ear, in the facial canal they move downward. But if you look at stylomastered foramen, they never exit from here, where they have gone? Yes ma'am, where they have gone? Some magic has been done there. Anyone? Where these fibers have gone? Parasympathetic. They don't come, they do enter into facial canal, but they don't come out at the stylomastered foramen. Somewhere on the way they disappear. They jump. Where they jump? They jump into middle ear. Right? The problem is that they were very happily going with that, but suddenly they realize if they keep on going, they will end up on the face. And glands are not on the face. Glands are inside. So as soon as they realize they are with the, with the wrong partner, and going for the wrong destination, they have to jump off the track and take a new road. Now, where they have to go? They have to go sublingual gland. What is this gland here? Sublingual gland. And what is this gland here? Submandibular gland. Now, these parasympathetic fibers need to go to sublingual gland and submandibular gland. 
now they have to somehow jump from the track and reach to some nerve which is going near to the tongue are you understanding the nerve which go to the tongue one of the very important nerve is lingual nerve is it difficult to remember the lingual nerve goes to the tongue it's easy it means these fiber parasympathetic fiber somehow should jump from the seventh nerve and go to which nerve lingual. say loudly my friends lingual. they have to jump to which nerve lingual nerve now we see from where is the lingual nerve a little bit whereabouts of lingual nerve you must be knowing there is something called foramen ovale here one of you was trying to push some other nerves there you know foramen ovale here through foramen ovale this is the mandibular division which comes you, you understand it mandibular division one of the branch of mandibular division divided into anterior division and posterior division i will not go into detail one of the branch of mandibular division is called lingual nerve and this lingual nerve goes to the tongue and give touch pain and temperature from the anterior to third of the tongue lingual nerve collect which sensation from anterior to third of the tongue touch if someone touch your where is the tip boy yes if someone touch the tongue anterior to third of the tongue right so which nerve is going to take fibers of the touch lingual. yes lingual. lingual nerve it takes touch and if someone bite there again it will take pain touch pain and if put a hot potato in your mouth again this so lingual nerve take the fiber of touch pain and temperature but if someone has in his mouth hello in mouth <laughs> chocolate also so then anterior two third of the tongue has to taste the chocolate right taste is not done by this component of lingual nerve because this is coming from trigeminal system trigeminal system is concerned with somatic sensation which are touch pain and temperature now you remember that this salivatory okay so this these fibers were passing through internal artery meatus geniculate ganglion facial canal suddenly when they were going down in the facial canal they realized oh my god i'm going to go out of the cranial on the surface of face so they decide to jump off from here from here they should jump off i think here their brain worked here the fiber suddenly realize that they are going for wrong destination is to follow the facial nerve proper so now where they have to jump yes my friends to lingual, lingual nerve now the how they have to jump they are on the posterior wall of they are inside a bony canal which is present in the posterior wall of middle ear so first they have to make a hole and jump out of this canal so actually this canal has a hole here this canal has a hole here this is called posterior canaliculus right from this canaliculus these parasympathetic fibers move and jump into where jump into which cavity yes my friends middle ear from here now they have to move backward or forward for lingual nerve forward they jump through that like this right while they are jumping like this then from here there is a special fissure we call this fissure pterygo tympanic fissure what we call it pterygo tympanic fissure from there they jump out and as they jump out they see their friends going what is this nerve going lingual nerve this is infratemporal fossa so in the infratemporal fossa these parasympathetic fibers will jump to what is this lingual nerve they will go with the lingual nerve they will go with the lingual nerve but again they don't want to go to the tongue they just find here what is this ganglion sub mandibular ganglion they separate from the lingual nerve and preganglionic fibers end up into which ganglion sub mandibular ganglion from here post ganglionic fibers go to what is this sublingual gland and also go to submandibular gland so salivation am i clear so we have dealt with the, the final destination of these visceromotor oh sorry branchiomotor fibers we have also dealt with the fibers in the facial nerve coming from superior salivatory nucleus which are lacrimatory fibers and 
सेलिब्रेटरी फाइबर नाउ वी आर कनेक्टेड विद व्हाट व्हाट इज दिस डांसिंग न्यूक्लियस न्यूक्लियस ऑफ ट्रैक्टस सोलिटेरियस इज द राइट नाउ न्यूक्लियस ऑफ ट्रैक्टस सोलिटेरियस आई टोल्ड यू है स्पेशल नर्व ब्रिंग द टेस्ट फाइबर फ्रॉम इंटीरियर टू थर्ड ऑफ द टंग एंड दे आर कनेक्टेड विद न्यूक्लियस ट्रैक्टस सोलिटेरियस सो व्हाट रियली हैपन नाउ Touch pain and temperature from anterior to third of the tongue is taken by lingual nerve. But this is the taste fiber from anterior to third of the tongue, right? They are also going with the lingual nerve. These are taste fiber, and these are touch pain, temperature, hot potato here, but ch chocolate here. Is that right? Taste fibers go from here. They are going as a part of what? What lingual nerve? Here it was, lingual nerve. Now these are which fibers? Yes, please. Taste, taste fibers are part of the lingual nerve right now, and they go. They leave the lingual nerve because they don't want to end up into trigeminal system. They have to end up into tractus solitarius nucleus. So they actually they move with the parasympathetic fibers. from here they jump into what is this cavity middle ear cavity right from here they enter where posterior canal and from here they go upward taste fibers what are these fibers taste fibers and yes they are connected to the tractus solitarius right now so it means that salivatory pathway fibers parasympathetic fiber for salivatory pathway and what is this taste fibers they have little common thing that taste fibers actually they are sensory fiber they should be explained from periphery to the center but i will do it from center to periphery just to make it easy to your mind so fibers are where tractus solitarius the here are which fiber connected gastrotri taste sensory fiber these fibers move with the parasympathetic fiber into which facial nerve proper or nervous intermedius nervous intermedius taste fibers go through again with the facial nerve into internal auditory meatus taste fibers are passing through geniculate ganglion now this is the point to remember actually geniculate ganglion has the cell bodies of these taste fiber geniculate ganglion has cell bodies of these taste fibers and from these cell bodies peripheral process go to the tongue and central process go to the nucleus tractus solitarius in the geniculate ganglion there are cell bodies of taste fiber and later on i will tell you some cell bodies of touch pain temperature fiber from here touch pain and temperature fibers from here right now So geniculate ganglion is not a parasympathetic ganglion. Geniculate ganglion is a ganglion which has cell bodies of sensory neuron related with the taste, taste from anterior to third of the tongue, and also cell bodies for some sensory fibers coming from the external ear. Right now, so from here the taste fibers they are going along with the facial nerve proper and parasympathetic fibers, but when parasympathetic fiber decide to jump out of facial canal taste fiber also jump out of the facial canal so parasympathetic and fi taste fiber both jump through what tympanic cavity right and they exit in front of the tympanic cavity and then they become part of which nerve lingual nerve but parasympathetic fiber on the way leave to the submandibular ganglion but taste fiber continue with the lingual nerve until the They are able to innervate anterior two third of the tongue for the fungi form papillae or taste. You can say taste sensation system. Clear? Now, thank God, most of the things are done. We are left with one fiber. What are these? Touch pain temperature from the external ear. Is that right? These fibers also have their cell bodies in where? Geniculate ganglion. These their central processes. go in the center and get connected with what is this spinal nucleus or trigeminal system and the peripheral process 
मूव विद वॉट फेशियल नॉ प्रॉपर इन टू फेशियल के नाल बैकवर्ड एंड देन फेशियल के नाल डाउनवर्ड बट दीज टच पेन टेम्परेचर फाइबर कीप ऑन गोइंग डाउन टच पेन एंड टेम्परेचर फाइबर कीप ऑन गोइंग डाउन 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 एंड कम आउट ऑफ वट इज दिस फनी थिंग स्टेलोमास्टर्ड फॉर अमेन एंड दे गोइंग टू पोस्टीरियर आरिकुलर ब्रांच एंड पोस्टीरियर आरिकुलर ब्रांच गेव सेंसेशन टच पेन एंड टेम्परेचर और सोमेटिक जनरल सोमेटिक सेंसेशन टू द पोस्टीरियर part of external ear right and thank god that's complete the basic orientation or clear orientation or core concept related with the facial nerve i have not talked about the clinical points that will discuss into next lecture right but before really i close i will test you right now you, you will tell me what what is there right say it loudly first of all we are going to start the fiber from here and connect to the periphery what are this fiber in facial nerve bring your motor right seventh nerve facial nerve proper then they move forward they are moving through what this part moving through facial nerve proper through internal auditory meatus and then through the geniculate ganglia they move backward into what facial canal in the medial wall then they move downward in facial canal in posterior wall then first branch is given by what is this this brachial motor fiber to which muscle stapedius and then these fiber come out at stylomastoid foramen and they give posterior branches posterior auricular branch goes to muscle with it some sensory fiber also supply the what is this external ear external ear sensation touch pain and temperature then these fibers give a little branches to the posterior belly of digastric and stylohyoid and then main facial nerve proper enter into which gland parotid gland and from the parotid gland they they divide into which branches temporal then zygomatic buccal then marginal mandibular and cervical for muscle the facial expression and platysma claro clear now after this we come to the parasympathetic fibers parasympathetic fiber are two types of fiber mainly lacrimatory and salivatory they start from which nucleus say it loudly which nucleus superior salivatory nucleus they move as a part of which now facial nerve proper or nervous intermedius nervous intermedius up to the geniculate ganglia they are lacrimatory pathway and salivatory pathway separate lacrimatory pathway goes through a nerve which is called greater petrosal nerve which meet into foramen lacerum with deep petrosal nerve together these fibers go as nerve to pterygoid canal to which ganglion pterygopalatine ganglion they are preganglionic which fiber end preganglionic lacrimatory fiber end or parasympathetic fiber end then from here lacrimatory fiber jump to maxillary zygomatic branch of maxillary and from there they jump to the lacrimal branch of of thalamic and reach to lacrimal gland and some other branches go to nasal gland and paranasal gland and palatine glands done then salivatory fibers salivatory fibers separated from lacrimatory pathway at geniculate ganglion they move with the facial nerve proper into facial canal they are moving backward then downward but from there through posterior canaliculus they jump into middle ear and they are having which other fiber with them taste fiber now this nerve the jumping nerve from this posterior part of facial canal this jumping nerve is passing through the tympanic cavity when you throw light in the on the tympanic membrane when you throw a strong light on tympanic membrane you will look at the shade of this nerve jumping across the cavity you know what is the name of this nerve this part corda tympani have you heard of corda tympani have you heard of corda tympani in past this is corda tympani what is corda tympani this is a cord in the tympanic membrane tympanic cavity what is this cord it's a neurons a nerve is jumping across the tympanic cavity this nerve has which fibers it has parasympathetic preganglionic fibers and also the taste fiber from anterior to third of the tongue and parasympathetic fiber going to the submandibular ganglion right so what is this nerve yes corda tympani so we can say basically corda tympani fuse with the lingual nerve right so 
what I was saying that sub uh, parathrombotherapy fibers from here they jump as corda tympani along with the taste fibers and they exit at the tympanic fissure and they in the infratemporal fossa they meet with lingual nerve as a part of lingual, lingual nerve they move a little and eventually depart and preganglionic fibers end into which ganglion submandibular ganglion and from the submandibular ganglion post ganglionic fibers go to uh, submandibular gland and sublingual gland done third taste fiber taste fiber truly they, we should explain them from the periphery the taste fiber from anterior two thirds of the tongue they move centrally yes as a part of lingual nerve but from the lingual nerve so met touch pain and temperature fiber go to the mandibular division and taste fiber become part of corda tympani and through the corda tympani they jump through the middle ear cavity and they reach to the facial nerve in the facial canal here the taste fibers move upward right then they move forward into facial what is this canal and at geniculate ganglion they have their cell body from this cell body the central processes move with nervous intermediates through the internally caustic meatus and eventually go to the brain stem and get connected to nucleus of tractus solitarius done then touch pain and temperature somatic afferent from ear they start from the ear they enter into posterior auricular branch of facial nerve and from there they enter into facial canal they move upward right and then they move forward through facial canal into middle ear, middle ear medial wall they reach to genicular ganglia these fibers also have the cell body here and the central processes move as a part of which, which nerve nervous intermediate part of facial nerve and eventually they enter into pontocerebral junction right they enter into brain stem and they get connected inside the brain stem with the spinal part of trigeminal nuclei any question up to this so this completes our core concept basic concept about the facial nerve in the next lecture we'll talk about bell's palsy and other facial nerve lesions class dismissed